Today's first reading takes up the immediate aftermath of the martyrdom of St. Stephen. We're told that on the very day that he died, a bitter persecution was started against the church in Jerusalem. So in Jerusalem, there are several thousand believers in Jesus Christ. And now this is the first time when a real strong persecution breaks out. And Saul, who had stood by and approved of Stephen's martyrdom, he seems to take charge of this persecution. We're told that Saul then worked for the total destruction of the church. And we will know Saul as St. Paul, but he started off with this great zeal to eradicate the gospel and to eradicate adherence to the gospel and to eradicate the church. We would see it as an unholy zeal, but Saul believed himself to be fully doing this for the glory of God. But he, in doing this, accomplishes God's purposes. Even though God would not have wished Saul to destroy the church, would not have wished him to go around arresting people and putting them in prison, God uses this evil intention for a great good because we're told that except for the apostles, the people fled from Jerusalem and they went out to the towns and villages in Judea and Samaria and they brought the gospel with them. So here Saul is trying to crush the Christian community, trying to crush the church and to stop the gospel. And it has the effect of actually spreading the gospel because the people leave Jerusalem, bringing the gospel with them. Philip, one of the deacons, goes to a Samaritan town and he proclaims Christ to them. And so many others would have done the same because they were absolutely convinced of this gospel message. And so the very persecution which would seek to snuff them out is the persecution that drives the gospel out into the wider world. It's the beginning of the evangelization of the world. And we'll hear in the coming days at Mass, and as we read through the Acts of the Apostles, we'll hear that Saul, this great first great persecutor of the church, he'll have his encounter with the risen Lord, and he'll be utterly transformed. And we will know him as St. Paul, one of the greatest evangelists and proclaimers and carriers of the gospel the world has ever seen. So what do we learn from this? We might be in a difficult situation, things going against us under a certain burden or oppression or trial or tribulation, but we know that God is good and that God turns all things to the good and for our good. The church in Jerusalem probably at that moment when Stephen was killed thought, oh, we are in a really difficult situation. How are we going to get through this? Is this the end of our movement? But God had a higher purpose and he used the very trial and tribulation that they were undergoing to spread the gospel further, to bring the salvation of Jesus Christ to more souls, to spread that goodness of the gospel around. So in our trials, we have to wait patiently in the Lord, on the Lord in those trials. We say what Psalm, I think it's 116, says, I trusted even when I said I am sorely afflicted. So in this moment, it's not necessarily the, God, the Lord's will that we are undergoing this difficult trial in our life right now, but it is the will of God to draw good from it. And we wait patiently on him. We trust him. We say, Lord, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know when it's going to end. But I know that you are a good God and that you are going to bring a great good from this terrible circumstances. Even though I can't see it, even though I don't understand it, with all my heart and with the conviction of my faith, I believe in it. Because your son, Jesus Christ, has told me that you are a good father. And I need not worry. So whatever might be going on in your life today, put your trust in God. He will either preserve you from that trial. He will either deliver you through that, from that trial. Or he will give you the strength and grace to triumph through that trial. The ultimate effect will be a great good will come of it further down the line. That's where... I suppose the rubber meets the road with regard to our faith. It's very easy to believe that God is good and to trust in him when all things are going well. 
But when things are against us, when there is opposition, when there is trial and tribulation, then our faith comes into its own and says, Lord, I trust you. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know how long it's going to go on. But I know that you are with me and that with you, if I have you with me, I need fear nothing.